we've previously considered the situation when there were two resistors that happen to be in series and replacing them with one equivalent resistor or if the two resistors were parallel, how to replace them with one equivalent resistor. Now we're going to consider more complicated combinations of resistors, but use this idea of series and parallel to continue to simplify it and hopefully get it down to one equivalent resistor again. So when analyzing a complex circuit, we are going to look for uh, occurrences of series and parallel. So with series, we will be looking for resistors which share the same current. The current that goes through one must go through the other. And then we can replace those resistors with one equivalent resistor where that equivalent resistance is given by R1 plus R2. Similarly, we will look for resistors that happen to be in parallel, where both ends, I'll call them the tops and the bottoms, are connected by wire and only wire. Then those resistors will be in parallel, and we can use a reciprocal uh, 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 is equal to 1 over R equivalent to find an equivalent resistance and replace the two resistors with one. And then we're just going to repeat, look for series, look for parallel, look for series, look for parallel, and keep simplifying. So we're going to analyze this big mess of a circuit to test our skills of finding series in parallel. So we are looking for first series. So current that goes through one must go through the other. So I've identified the two kilo ohm and the one kilo ohm there at the top as in series. So the current will come through the battery, through the ammeter, through that first three kilo ohm resistor at the top, and then it reaches a junction and it splits and some of it goes through the two and some of it goes through the 3.3 but whatever went through the two must go through the one and that's our definition of series then whatever current got went through the one reaches another junction and some of it goes through the 1.1 and some of it goes down to the four but anything that goes through the 1.1 must go through the 1.2 and the 1.3 therefore the 1.1 and the 1.2 and the 1.3 are also in series now i can take care of these two series combinations at the same time if i want because they're not overlapping. The one series involves the two and the one, and the other series combination involves the 1.1, the 1.2, and the 1.3. So I can do these independently in either order or at the same time. Resistors in series simply add. So I add those resistors. The two and the one give me three, and then I replace the two resistors with one, and they must. Uh, I must come into the combination uh, and leave the combination uh, in the same way. Uh, similarly, for the 1.1, the 1.2, and the 1.3, I'm going to replace it with one resistor of 3.6, and it must sort of that one resistor must connect to the two nodes that, that the three are currently connecting to. So I've inserted my two equivalent resistances that I previously found, the 3 kilo ohm at the top and the 3.6 kilo ohm over on the right. And now I look for other series or parallel combinations. This time I'm looking for parallel. Let's remember our definition of parallel. There is a connection on one side of the resistors and a connection on the other side of the resistors, a connection of wire. And this makes them have the same voltage and be what we call in parallel. So that four kilo ohm resistor and the 3.6 kilo ohm resistor, there's a connection of wire between those two resistors on the top, and there's a connection between those two resistors on the bottom, and so they are a parallel combination. And I've applied the uh, reciprocal uh, addition approach and got an equivalent resistance of 1.8947, sort of carrying more digits than I really need, but just just to have a lot of accuracy here. Similarly, down at the bottom, I see that the 2.3 and the 2.2 are in parallel. Uh, so again, the, the left-hand side has a connection of a wire and only wire, and the right side has a connection of a wire and only wire. And so that connection of a wire on both sides is our definition of being in parallel. 
And so then I can replace those two resistors with one equivalent resistor, and I use the reciprocal addition formula to find the equivalent resistance, in this case, 1.1244. So here we see the circuit with our previous equivalent resistances substituted in, so the 1.8947 on the side and the 1.1244 along the bottom. And then we again, we look for series or parallel. This time again, we're going to look for series. So we're looking for resistors that see the same current. So the current comes out of the battery, goes through the ammeter, goes through the three kilo ohm, that first three kilo ohm before the junction at the top. And then it will split and some of it will go through the second three kilo ohm at the top and others will go down through the 3.3 kilo ohm resistor. But whatever went across the top, the, the three kilo ohm resistor must also go through the 1.89 and must also go through the 1.12. And so those three resistors there are in series, resistors in series add. And so the equivalent resistance is going to be 6.0191. And we continue with this analysis. So we substitute in the equivalent we just found previously, the 6.0191, and then again, look for series or parallel. Here, we're gonna see a parallel combination. A parallel combination is when there's a connection of wire on one side and a connection of wire on the other side. So the 3.3 kilo ohm and the 6.0191 kilo ohm resistor, there's a connection of wire on the top, there's a connection of wire on the bottom, they're going to see the same voltage. This is our definition of parallel. So I can use the parallel combination, the reciprocal addition to find the equivalent resistance. And I've applied that formula and I've come up with an equivalent resistance of 2.1314 kilo ohm. We make that previous substitution, the equivalent resistance of the 2.1314, and again, look for a series in parallel. We're just going to continue this until we can't do it or until there's just one resistor left. So these two resistors are in series. The, again, the current comes out of the battery. It goes through the ammeter. It goes through the 3 kilo ohm, and then it must also go through the 2.1314. So they see the same current. That's our definition of resistors in series. We can apply the formula for equivalent resistance of resistors in series, which is addition. So the equivalent resistance is 5.1314. And so now here's the circuit with just one equivalent resistor. And now with just one equivalent resistor, we can apply Ohm's law of V equals IR. We have the voltage of five. We have the equivalent resistance of 5.1314. So we can solve for the current I equals V on R. So we're dividing five volts by 5.1314 kilo ohm, and we're getting 0.9744 milliamp. Again, if you divide volt by kilo ohm, kilo is a thousand, so you have a thousand in the denominator, so you're going to get thousandths, which is milli. But then a meter reads uh, 974.4 microamps, so there's the difference between milli and micro. Milli is 10 to the minus 3, micro is 10 to the minus 6, so the, the unit is a thousand times smaller microamps than you're seeing in the meter, and therefore the number uh, you're seeing is a thousand times bigger. So instead of 0.9744, you're seeing 974.4. But but these are the same answer, so we're getting what we expect. Now we've built the circuit. Usually one would do this algebra just on a piece of paper, but we've been in this presentation just we kept rebuilding the circuit with putting in, substituting in the equivalent resistances. and uh, if you've paid attention, you can see that the the ammeter reading has remained the same. And this was sort of our idea of equivalent resistance, that if you uh, apply the same voltage, it was always five volts, then you keep getting the same current. Then so this concept of if you are replacing resistors with their appropriate equivalent resistance, then you will get the same effect. And so you will see the the battery, the same for the same battery, the same current. And so if you go back to the original current, uh, sorry, the original circuit, you will see that it's the, for the same battery, you get the same current 
of the original mess of many, many resistors and this final one of one resistor with a resistance of 5.1314 kilo ohms. Sometimes a question is asked about a particular resistor, like what is the voltage across a particular resistor or what's the current through a particular resistor? And the analysis so far does not answer the question. So then we have to take what I'm calling backward steps. So that final 5.1314 kilo ohm resistor came from a three kilo ohm resistor and a 2.1314 kilo ohm resistor in series. So I take this backward step of taking that five and breaking it back into the three and the two that it came from. But now we have a result for the current. So the, the current through the uh, 2.1314 kilo ohm resistor was the 0.9744 and the same for the three. And then I, if I know two things about a resistor, if I know its current and its resistance, I can always find, if I know two things in Ohm's law, I can always find the third. So if I know the resistance and I know the current, I can find the voltage. So I can find the voltage that would be across that 2.1314 by multiplying R and I, that's 2.0768. And similarly for the that three kilo ohm at the top, I can say the voltage is the resistor of three kilo ohms times the current and get the 2.9232. So here we're going to take a second backward step. So previously we had two resistors. After one backward step, we went to two resistors and now we are taking that second resistor and remembering that it had come from two resistors in parallel, a 3.3 .3 and a 6.0191. Resistors in parallel have the same voltage, and they have the same voltage as their equivalent. So we knew the voltage of that equivalent, and so we know that that voltage was 2.0768. And so now we know the voltage across these resistors, and we know the resistances, and in Ohm's law of equals IR, if we know two things, we can always find the third. So in this instance, we know the voltage, and we know the resistance, and so we can solve for current. V equals IR, solve for current, I equals V divided by R, so I'll take my voltage, and divide it by my resistance, and that will give me a current. For the 3.3, I'm getting 0.629 milliamps, and for the 6.0191 resistor, I'm getting a current of 0.345 milliamps. So I'll take one more backward step so that basically there was about a 6.02 kilo ohm resistor, which really came from three that were in series. And so that's the three kilo ohm, the 1.8947 and the 1.1244. Uh, resist, these resistors are in series. Resistors in series see the same current, and they see the same current as their equivalent. So when it was a 6.02 kilo ohm resistor, we knew that it saw 0.345 milliamps, and so that is the current seen by each of these sort of now individual resistors. So I can Again, if I know two things, I can always find the third. So at the, that resistor at the top right, the three kilo ohm on the top right, I know that its, its resistance is three, its current is 0.345. The uh, resistance is in kilo ohms, kilo is a thousand. The uh, current is in milliamps, so the, the K and the M sort of cancel each other out. One is thousandths, one is thousandths. And so I'm just left with 1.035 volts. Similarly for the 1.8947, I multiply uh, the resistance times the current and get 0.654 volts. And the 1.1244, I multiply that by the current and get 0.388. So again, this is my standard. I replaced one uh, equivalent resistance with the three that uh, led up to it, uh, it was series, things in series have the same current, and then I know the current and the resistance and can find all the individual voltages. This is our sort of backward step approach.